This video is going to look at microeconomic policy and it's going to use this model to show the effects of it. If you're unsure about how this model works, you should look at the videos on the topics of aggregate demand in the alternative aggregate demand aggregate supply model and also the aggregate supply curve. They will explain how we arrive at this equilibrium and why the curves look the way that they do, but if you already know then we have an aggregate supply curve, an aggregate demand curve, giving us an equilibrium level of national income of NY1 and an equilibrium price level of P1. Most of the policies that we look at are demand side policies. So things like monetary policy, fiscal policy, they try to increase the level of aggregate demand in an economy. Microeconomic policies are also called supply side policies. What they are doing is trying to make the economy work more efficiently and by working more efficiently the economy can produce more output with the same level of inputs. An economy can only make so much output from the, give it the, the given inputs that they have and so by becoming more productive they can increase the supply that they produce from that same level of inputs. This is seen as a shifting out of the aggregate supply curve from AS to AS2. So we have the aggregate supply curve shifting in this direction. So now the economy can produce a greater level of output with the same level of inputs. We see as a result of this microeconomic reform that's been going on in this economy that supply, the supply curve has shifted out. The shifting of the supply curve gives us a new level of national income. We've moved from NY1 to NY2. And also, because the economy is now working more efficiently, goods are able to be produced at lower cost. And the lower cost leads to a decrease in the price level. So we have the price level fall in from P1 to P2 as a result of this microeconomic reform.